Welcome to Speak of the Devil, my name is Reverend Campbell, and this is a special semi-monthly satanic essay reading slash discussion show exclusively for patrons of Speak of the Devil on Patreon, except I fucked this setup and it sent out a message to people who uh, have that little bell icon checked who are subscribed to my channel, so this first one isn't exclusive, but I'll learn from my mistakes, and those of you who are peeking out of the tent flaps, you're welcome, you little buggers. Consider <laughs> donating yourself, or uh, becoming a patron is the better frame uh, for this. So, these are meant to be semi-monthly, twice a month, essay readings, and just a little added bonus for those of you who uh, have done me the massive favor of becoming a patron to Speak of the Devil, and one of you has joined me today, so let me say thank you and welcome everyone to Wes Vanderpool. How are you, man? Good. How are you today? I'm stoked that you're here. I, we oh. we set this whole thing up on very short notice, and uh, you're looking great, and I'm glad oh, that we can you. put this thing together, man. Oh, for sure. It's an honor to get to speak to you today, and uh, I just psyched myself that I get to partake in your show, which I enjoy <laughs> so often. I appreciate that. Um, you may not appreciate it as much once we're done. <laughs> And you, and you get the, That's true. <laughs> the curse of the live stream, which inevitably happens in most cases where some something will eventually break or like just for example, when I set this up, I haven't live streamed from YouTube in so long directly on this channel that there's extra steps that they added that I was not aware of, which ah, kind of sucks. Technology, but, man. I know. <laughs> what? Fucking tech. Stupid. Um, but for those of you patrons who are watching this on the Patreon feed... Consider coming on over to the YouTube channel and chatting with us live as we discuss this. And the way these are going to be working together is um, when I do have a live guest like today, uh, we'll do a quick sort of, hey, how you doing? And then I'll uh, perform the reading of the actual essay. And then we'll come back to this screen you're looking at here and we'll discuss the essay and, and try to draw a little bit more meaning out of it than if it were just on the page. Um, and hopefully we'll have something insightful to say. <laughs> and if not, well, you're the one choosing to watch. So <laughs> it's your fault, not mine. <laughs> um, all right. So this is actually from The Devil's Notebook. I'm reading it straight from this. And I've had this copy since I was like in high school. And that was a long time ago. <laughs> Do you still have like the original volumes that you picked up like of the standard Bible or whatever? Was it a while ago? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I still have them all. I've uh, been very careful with them not to loan them to anybody or uh, really let them out of my sight for very long. <laughs> that was the mistake that I made of, of loaning them out. So I was in uh, basic training and uh, I announced to everyone because I'm um, me that I was a Satanist. <laughs> and um, some people just immediately attracted not attracted, but they were drawn to the idea and they wanted to know more. And so I asked my wife, my brand new wife at the time, my current wife, um, to send me my copy of Standard Bible so that they could read it. And that was the end. I never saw it again. So I've gone through, <laughs> I think, three copies like that because I'm wow. stupid. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you can borrow this and I never see him again. Fucking people. Yeah. But this one, I've never let loose. This was the first satanic book I ever bought ever and it's always been my favorite because it's just pure distilled satanism without the pretext without the setup it's all just you had to both feet dive right into that pool in order to really comprehend it and that's what i really love about it so uh, it's amazing it's amazing what's one of your favorite books by the way uh the last one that i read i think uh oh my goodness the secret life of a satanist i just yeah. finished and it, it was just amazing. I really felt like I was there in, you know, 1950s, 1960s Hollywood, seeing all this stuff. And Did you I, read I, the, the re-release version or the original version? Uh, the re-release. Nice. Yeah, it, it was very good. Uh, moving on to uh, the Satanic Warlock next. So I'm excited cool. to get that one in. Nice. Yeah, Secret Life of the Satanist, is, it's just one of those books that... It, it's really like, because it's a biography, you, you kind of have to, you, you can't do it like an essay collection where you sort of bounce around. Right. You got to go cover to cover. And then you get this yeah. really solid understanding. What I love so much about that re-release that Magister Barton put out was that mm. it added extra information that had only been speculated upon up until the right. moment of, of the, the divorce and the, 
changing of the guard and it, it was uh it was really exciting as a member to be able to see those events from the eyes like from blanche barton's eyes for example i mean just yeah incredible stuff all right oh uh, it was great let's um let's get into this because i'm sure we're gonna want to chat about this and i'm gonna try to keep these shorter episodes because of course we don't want to do a whole hour long dissection of an, an essay and you know both of us have lives that we want to get back to so, <laughs> so let's get to this um and then i'll come right back to you right after this all right all right people on the importance of being evil volumes have charted the history of man's cruelty and tyranny how many have considered the essential role of villainy in human development an impartial survey would no doubt qualify the villain as the unsung hero while fusty religionists still cast Satanists in the old, convenient mold, the readily obtainable literature of contemporary Satanism has inspired change in religious thought. Can we expect such an admission of modern theologians? Of course not. It's always a villain, however, who becomes the catalyst for change. Consider these still fresh examples. If Aleister Crowley had not been the world's wickedest man, the likes of Gerald Gardner or Margaret Murray would not have stepped on stage for purposes of enlightenment. And Dennis Wheatley might be a starving hack. They owe their identities to Crowley's outrages. If the Hell's Angels had not caused such a fur and had been so uh, ritualized in motion pictures like the wild one in Scorpio Rising, a clean wholesome interest in motorcycling and its billions in profits would not have evolved. The glamour of evil, not fun in the sun, secretly spawned the present bike movement. Pollution reduction, economical transportation, all other rationales for motorcycling are piety devices. If the late Senator Joseph McCarthy had not performed his auto de fe, there would be no movement of the politically correct. If Hitler had not singled out the Jews for discrimination, the nation of Israel might never have been realized. For every Charles Manson, there are a million solid citizens who can bristle with righteous indignation over his crimes. The same fine folks who stand idly by while an old lady is being mugged in broad daylight, not wanting to get involved, invariably alleviate their cowardice by hollering their heads off for stronger legislation against crime. Remember, there is no misfortunate so I'm sorry, no misfortune so great that somebody else can't put up with it. A villain is said to be bad, but an apathetic drone is far worse. A villain must be stigmatized so that his opponents can be considered heroic. These heroes are simply reactors who implement a change in affairs sometimes mistaken for progress. What sets human reaction in motion? A force which is either intrinsically or contrivedly considered evil. In order for evil to serve an admirable purpose, it must be, I'm sorry, it must have method. The lowest level would be Satanist, who thinks he's justifying his existence by committing evil acts, is the most deluded of all. As has been amply proven, Deep South renegades like Huey Long and George Wallace, certainly considered evil by many, nevertheless exerted reaction on a large scale. The creep, whose evil deed of the day consists of pulling the wings off a butterfly, invariably causes no productive reaction. He cannot rightly be considered evil, simply moronic. The more grandiose the villain, the more beneficent he is to society. The small-time villain affects only the microcosm in which he operates, unless his act of villainy is considered so heinous that it spreads beyond his normal sphere of influence. When a villain attains universality, he is endowed with the mantle of devildom. However, if a real villain does not come forward to serve as a convenient embodiment of evil, thereby serving the good guy's cause, such a person must be developed and sometimes invented. If evil were by chance eradicated, the race would die of inertia at least under existing standards of mental and emotional development. That the villain is the most formidable enemy of boredom was proven in a rather quaint manner by a short-lived tabloid called Good News. Feeling that the populace was weary of the standard journalistic fare of murder, rape, war, riot, scandal, and catastrophe, Good News printed just that, Good News. It valiantly lasted two or three issues before its untimely demise. Why did it die? Good news is only really good to those directly involved. Most people lead such a futile and use I'm sorry, lead such futile and useless lives that only bad news makes them feel better. 
if not better, certainly gooder. If one cannot gain recognition for anything else, he can rest well with the assurance that he is good, which in most cases equates with right. Were it not for an evil to rail against, he might just as well never have been born. Yes, evil is the great savior and sustainer of those who condemn it most. That, that was uh, on the importance of being evil by Anton Zander LeVay and holy fuck. <laughs> Dude, like the first time I read that, I immediately started trying to wrap my brain around the concept of the Satanist considering themselves evil and really the, the construct that society considers Satanists evil, not the Satanists themselves. But then the idea of wanting to impact the world in some way. And so, of course, good is what you like, bad is what you don't like. Satan's the best friend the church has ever had. If it wasn't for him, it wouldn't be in business all these years. There's these ideas that we as Satanists hold as evident, self-evident truths. And that is that you don't need a good guy badge in life. You just need to uh, present yourself as your own self. And in doing that, you are inevitably by the outside seen as being evil. But if you want to have grand impact on a populace, then you have to be overtly evil, uh, sort of maniacally evil. Do you think that there's even room for a Satanist to reach that level of air quote evil in order to affect change like that? I think it is, it is possible if what the Satanist is doing is beneficial to himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, anything can make change if enough people think it is horrible enough mm -hmm. and for for example you know uh not using satanists but uh you know if the kardashians continue to do all of their fun stuff i mean there's so many people that think they're just horrible people but they're out you know they're living their lives that's yeah. that's what they do and they don't they don't give a shit <laughs> That's true. And, I, and I'm sure all the people who are, are saying how horrible they are, given the opportunity and the means, would do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And in a, a microscopic version of it, I'm doing that. <laughs> exactly. <Fuck! laughs> and I can only think of one individual that has successfully pulled this off and that it was even relevant or, or reasonable for them too and that is Anton LaVey in the creation yes. of the Church of Satan and the religion of Satanism he became the ultimate bad guy and still today is considered still by many today. groups as such um, absolutely I mean even uh, you know I get in watching to uh, like all the occult stories they uh, and shows and stuff that uh, Netflix will provide you know mm. and uh, one I saw the other day was uh, talking about the evils of Satanism, and it was showing all of these uh, kids in Europe who had, uh, you know, all had copies after they had killed themselves or killed others, and they all had copies of the Satanic Bible. And it was Anton Lavey motivated them through his Satanic Bible and through wow. the Church of Satan. And it's like what bullshit. <laughs> Wait, do you remember the name of that? I'd like to check that out. I. Uh, I'd have to look. I think if it's it uh, occults and mysteries, but uh, okay. yeah. I'll have to check that out. I, I love that that bullshit because I grew up in the '80s satanic panic era, which is a right. perfect example of the reaction to the idea of evil. Now, the yes. uh, examples that um, Anton Lavey brought up in this essay, I think, were. Um, cultivated examples because you have yeah um uh the end of segregation and you have um uh oh fuck see now my brain is just totally <laughs> off. um there was examples of uh a, a beneficial outcome for the greater society oh um uh the hitler and uh yes the nation of israel coming into existence now you can argue whether that's a good thing or a bad thing and sure i've got my opinions and we're not going to do take this, <laughs> this show off the rails and talk about it but I, for israel as a zionist nation yes it was beneficial in that end sure. so it's weird that you have to go through fire in some cases to come out in a better position and you could almost argue 
you know what? I'm not going to go down that road because that's going <laughs> to be a political conversation. Um, I will say that it's not always so. It's not always the beneficial outcome, that ultimate idea of evil. Because whereas the satanic panic was an overreaction to the idea of Satanism and the misunderstanding of Satanism through the Judeo-Christian lens, there was no beneficial on outcome on the outside unless you just determine sporadic understanding because it's not a clear understanding what satanism is to everyone and there's still no. lies being per per uh, perpetuated by those same types of people so yeah. we didn't come out squeaky clean no not at all <laughs> so the, not I, at all i, I mean the, i don't even know the, that i would want to but still <laughs> no no i i think being the bad guy uh, keeps the wrong sort of way in yeah essence the the annoying good guy who has to be friends with everyone yeah they don't like a bad guy yeah unless they can convert them yeah yeah and and they try oh they try <laughs> <laughs> they do they're unrelenting um on the other side of that coin though equally there are the, those types that are attracted to that bad guy that want yeah. to be that bad guy but just aren't in their core not to say the bad guy is in you know you're dark and evil and you're pulling wings off butterflies as um Levy mentioned in the the essay there but just that yeah. you know you're living your own independent life rather than trying to conform to some existing uh, agreed upon reality that is what people are drawn to but not everyone is capable of that and so i, I always found that That's a really true. interesting idea too is that yes we Yes, we don't want to be a massive attractor, but then by not being a massive attractor, we are attracting those pseudos in mass. Yes. So I'm glad that I'm not in the administration. <laughs> <laughs> that must be one of the hardest jobs in the world. <laughs> that would be such a nightmare. So hats right. off to them uh, for oh, doing yes. that. So are there any other thoughts that you had gleaned from this essay? Uh, just... The, you could look at, uh, I mean, and not to get too political, but just our current political climate in our country. Uh, it makes one wonder what can come of uh, what we have happening today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see a lot with uh, people actually getting out and, and voting or at least uh, saying that, you know, Better look out because now we're all voting. I mean, everybody should be anyway. But, you know, more often than not, they don't because they feel it doesn't help them in any way at all. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see how that happens. And uh, the other thing you could think about is the outcome of all of the, the, the mass shootings in the last two years. Uh, a lot of people have organized and are, they're trying to get things changed in legislation now, whether or not that actually will change for the good, um, we'll see. You know, it could be a, a huge knee-jerk reaction to where everything gets banned, which, in my opinion, isn't necessarily the case. But, but again, not to go off the rails. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's the most interesting thing I think about whenever, whenever we're talking about reactions as far as political. Um, machinations um, you know in the examples given uh, desegregating segregated spaces I think that's a good thing all in all it's a progressive ideal progressives always in the end win out for better or worse in this case I think it was better um, when it comes to uh, the current president and the current house and senate there may be a massive reaction from what came to what will end up being in the house's flips um and that will affect everything moving forward maybe better maybe, maybe. a lot worse <laughs> um and then you know in like you're you were speaking to like the gun debate the ultimate bad guy would be every single shooter and then the lack of a rational reaction to organizations like the nra who used to support gun legislation and now don't they've turned into that ultimate bad guy as well for a lot of people so yes i think the fear of an overreaction on that side is much more um irrational than the reality because america always does small moves unless it's a um unless it's uh uh 
um, fuck. <laughs> My mind is going blank with the terminology I want to use. Unless it's a um, progressive social agenda, like yeah. um, homosexuals being able to marry, um, uh, interracial marriage, women being able to vote, uh, non-segregation, um, stuff like that, which is which are massive issues compared to the right to own type A or type B of a firearm, I don't think is even close in importance. And so... I don't see right. that being a massive reaction, but it is interesting because we do see these devils being manufactured oh, on, yeah. and he, well, here's something that I find really fascinating. And I'm sure it was done on a microcosm in uh, Nazi Germany when they're saying <laughs> the American Jew is coming to crush us, you know, with right. the help of their <laughs> British tyrants or, you know, whatever their propaganda was at the, the time. I can only imagine that spin, but we're seeing it play out on our national stage and I, I say us wherever right. you live you're seeing these same types of messages where rather than one if you're in germany you're just seeing the german view if you're in america you're just seeing the american view nowadays right. we're seeing both views immediately hitting each other and so i think it's harder to say well there's the great evil person so my agenda right. is going to be uh, helped because that evil person exists when both sides have an ultimate evil person and they are getting equal weight in media. Yeah. So do you think well, that this idea could even happen anymore? I think it could happen uh, because I think there is enough media sources out there uh, that people are going to pick and choose. They're, they're going to label, you know, the, the right side, the right leaning person is, I think more bound to label CNN, MSNBC as as evil, fake news, propaganda for the left, and the left does the same thing with Fox News. And uh, there's many mediums in between. Yeah. What I do see, though, with uh, having so much information and getting both viewpoints, it it can cause a, a an individual who is rational to actually think. When in in maybe in the yeah yeah it, it, and maybe in the past that wasn't always so maybe they had their little local news channel or whatever and that was all they got they didn't have time for everything else but there I think there are individuals who are forced to think that can turn off the party line and and get both sides and and then make a decision but we're still going to have those that uh, are all one way or another and they're going to label the the opposing view is evil mm. it's the devil inherently <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's compounded specifically within satanists because we are so individualistic in that what i like is good what i don't like is bad and never the twin shall meet so how could there be an ultimate bad guy to a satanist when each satanist sees reality and life so dramatically different I, I would hope not. I would hope a, a Satanist would be able to educate themselves with all viewpoints and look just for the facts and cut through the bullshit. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a very hard thing to do with social media yeah. and, and news outlets everywhere. And then you never know when you're tweeting to a Russian bot, for instance. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so so it, it's... It, very difficult, but I, I would I would think Satanists would look at themselves enough and understand what they need to do to uh, to find reality, what mm -hmm. as close to reality as we can have. Yeah, I would like to think that. <laughs> I want to believe. I'm like Mulder on X Files. I want to believe so badly. Um, well, I'm what? sure you, you've seen a lot more of it's not always the case with Satanists. We still, I, I think, lose ourselves sometime to our own ideas and, mm -hmm. and just thinking that we are correct when we haven't looked at everything. We inherently think, oh, well, I, I'm correct. I'm the elite. And they really don't know. We really don't know, perhaps. Yeah. This is the... <laughs> no, absolutely. This is... Well, I think the, the fact that we're questioning is a good step forward. In that, absolutely. Um, typically, when individuals come into Satanism, they read lines like, the highest embodiment of human 
life or the alien elite or you are your own god and you put mm. on airs at that point you're like well if i am which i am of course i am because i'm me <laughs> then everything i think is just and right and true and factual and correct and they seem to forget or just miss the other part of that is that question all things including satanism including your exactly. own ideas in satanism and if you don't question all things then you can never actually be the highest embodiment of human life if and here's something else i don't actually think that that is an attainable like insignia rank or anything like it's not something you're gonna get like a badge from central congratulations <laughs> put this on your chest you are the highest embodiment of human i mean that's just stupid but the idea that you can be a better version of you is definitely attainable and that's only through questioning your own ideals and that is so that is more integral i think to becoming uh, self-actualized which i believe is the real end result of highest embodiment of human life um than anything else it's certainly more than just saying well this is what i've always thought so this is how i'm gonna feel no it, yeah exactly and i i think uh, you hit on a good point there that, uh, you know, it's definitely coming into Satanism and being a uh, first phaser, mm -hmm. you could say, that uh, you get that confidence boost. You, you you think about all that you're taking in, all the knowledge, and you, you start thinking of how great you are. And I, I think that is very dangerous because without that questioning, you end up uh, becoming what Satanists most often despise the most, a, a suedo. Yeah. You and you know, you said look suedo? at all the words. I, I did. Wow. I've never heard it that way. And have I been well, saying I, it wrong this whole time? <laughs> My whole life. No, I No, I, I am I am currently in, in process of eliminating a, a hillbilly accent and dialect. Ah. So uh I'm I'm sure there are gonna be a lot of things you're like, holy shit, it's <laughs> Did he just? Yes, I. I didn't I mean to. It. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, no. It's. <laughs> I I love fucking words as much as anything. So. <laughs> um. But. So but yes, ahead. I you I think you do run that risk of, of getting to that point mm -hmm. uh, without that questioning, and we we should question everything that we think. I mean, Fox Mulder had it correct the whole time. I think. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> In more than just that note. Um, right. No, I'd, I'd like there to be an alien conspiracy. I don't actually believe there is, but I'd like it. I'd like it. All right, well, um, yeah. uh, Wes, thank you so much for joining me on, and talking about this. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I love your shows, and uh, these essay readings are just tremendous. Just tremendous. Yeah, I'm hoping everyone's going to get something out of them. And if not actually getting something out of our discussion, maybe inspiring you to think about these established essays that have been out for decades, maybe a little bit different way and going back and rereading them, finding a new yeah. understanding or, or maybe a more enlightened understanding than previously you had uh, garnered from them. So uh, that's kind of the point of these. And again, these are meant solely for patrons of Speak of the Devil. Thank you all so much for your support. And uh, because of that, we're going to continue doing stuff like this. We're going to be doing film commentary. We're going to be doing daily vlogs still. It's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of great things happening because of you. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Wes. Oh, thank you, Adam. Well, until we can speak of the devil again, my friend, hail Satan. Hail Satan.